Hey everybody, welcome back to a special edition unboxing video where today we're here to open something very cool imported straight from Japan via PlayAsia. We have the Dragon Quest 11S Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition Nintendo Switch Console. So yes, this is actually going to be my seventh Nintendo Switch console. Technically my tenth if you count the Nintendo lights. And I do have more coming because I'm a fool. I'm a fool for Nintendo and I'm a fool for exclusive Joy-Cons. And these are very awesome Joy-Cons. Not only do we get the dark, almost Mario blue, but we get some great Toriyama designs on there as well. And I'm excited to check this out. The Switch itself also has some exclusive design to it, and the dock has exclusive designs as well. Now, I did have to import this from Japan via PlayAsia, which made it much more expensive than normal, but it does include the game with the special edition slipcover, so I'm pretty excited about that. And I will also be picking up the American version, because why not? Now, I can't claim I'm a huge fan of the Dragon Quest series. I have very little experience with it. I've only played a little in the past, but as soon as I found out Toriyama is doing the designs, it all made sense, and I'm such a huge Dragon Ball fan that I figure I had to give this thing a go. And this box is gorgeous in and of itself. All this wonderful artwork, all this beautiful Japanese writing that maybe Mary could understand, but I cannot. See some of these wonderful Toriyama designs and creations. So here we go, let's open this thing up and see what we think. And of course, right on the top here, we have the Joy-Cons and we have the Switch itself. So we're going to pull those out and we will set these aside. We'll of course be looking at these more in depth as we move along. Now we'll take off this top layer of cardboard. And of course, we have the piece of paper that is the safety information. No one cares. And of course, we have the plain old black Joy-Con wrist strap adapters. And if this is your first Nintendo Switch console, it's nice that they include this dog bone controller. And of course, there is the Switch dock, which we will be taking a beautiful look at here in a moment. And here we have our beautiful edition of Dragon Quest XI S, Echoes of an Elusive Age, definitive edition, physical edition for the Nintendo Switch. I love my physical games. Sure makes switching between a regular Switch and the light so much easier. Still not perfect, but much easier. And underneath, of course, we find your standard HDMI cable that is included with all Nintendo Switch consoles. This looks to be the normal about four and a half feet, I believe. So we also have your standard Nintendo Switch AC power supply unit. And even though this is Japan exclusive, this does seem to be set for America, which is interesting. Okay, now let's take a look at the individual pieces and parts. So first up, we'll start with the Switch dock. And it has this really glorious artwork on the outside of it. One of the best things about having a Nintendo Switch, or at least having multiple docks, is I do have a few different rooms that I like to play in. So instead of having to like move a whole bunch of equipment and cables like I would with a PlayStation or an Xbox, as long as I have a dock already hooked up in each TV, it's a pretty easy plug and play situation. And I can play anywhere I want anytime, which is pretty fantastic. And this dock does have the two USB ports on the side. And then we have a hidden USB port and HDMI 
and power section in the back. Now, of course, I would recommend using a screen protector, prefer preferably a tempered glass one, so you do not scratch your screen, which can still happen on these original dock-style consoles. Of course, the Switch console itself is rather gorgeous. You're basic on the front, But on the back, you have all this wonderful artwork of characters from the game. Plus, I believe this is the first time we get any kind of colorized artwork on the back. I've only seen silver artwork on the actual Switch itself in the past, so these nice little pops of blue look excellent. We do seem to have the slightly more durable version of the kickstand than we've had before, and of course your micro SD card slot. I highly recommend using a 400 gig, that is the biggest you can get. Even as a physical collector, I am still well into a 400 gig SD card, and it's not slowing down anytime soon. Now, as far as the AC voltage, uh, it's a little bit weird. In Japan, they run at 100 volts. In America, it's usually 110 to 120. In other places, it's like 240. But apparently, this looks like it's going to be okay. The AC adapter does say that it runs anywhere from 100 to 140, something like that. I don't remember exactly what it said, but it should work just fine. Now, let's look at these beautiful Joy-Cons. This dark blue color alone is gonna pop so well with my Mario Red Joy-Cons. I'm very excited to see those color combinations. There is a shield on the back of this one. Again, I love the artwork on these with the little slimes here that apparently taste like lime, if I remember correctly. And a sword on the back of this one. And of course, it is pretty easy to put these Joy-Con wrist strap adapters on. You want to make sure that you are lining up the correct direction or they will be very difficult to get undone. So you do this by looking for either the plus or the negative sign and of course, lining that up with the plus or negative sign on the Joy-Con itself. These seem to already be locked, this little white piece at the bottom. Just give it a tiny little flip forward or backwards to unlock, and then it should slide right down, and then flip it back up. Now when you're taking them off, you don't necessarily have to push the release button in the back, but I do sometimes find it helps get the Joy-Con back off of the straps fairly easily this dog bone controller. I'm kind of surprised that it doesn't have any artwork on it as they have gone out of their way to really make this an amazing addition with artwork on just about everything else. But if this is not your first or you've been around the Switch block for a while, of course by now you're likely playing with a pro controller or some other thing than this. Though this is not that uncomfortable and it can work pretty well. I played on these for quite a while when I was initially messing around with my Nintendo Switch. So now we will take a look at the actual game. We do have this wonderful foil cover. I'm sorry, I am blanking on what this was called. I do not have the information in front of me at this time. I don't necessarily like that we have a J card around it. I have the same problem with Blu-ray Steelbooks. I don't want to get rid of it, but I don't exactly know how to store it. Now you can buy just this version with this foil slip cover at least through Play Asia, You don't have to get the whole console. This is not exclusive to the console itself. And now we have the actual game. The artwork is exactly the same as America's, just the text is slightly different. And now I'll show you the inside, but I will tell you I've already pulled out two code slips so I don't reveal these codes in case I do not get them put into my system before I put out this video. 
and pretty basic simple artwork on the inside. Nothing too spectacular, not any kind of reversible cover or anything. And of course, this is what the cartridge looks like. And this, of course, as I'm covering the numbers with my fingers, I don't even know if it will work for me in North America. We have the Gorgeous Edition DLC with some kind of voice pack DLC, as best I can tell from Google Translate. And that is also the name of the slipcover, by the way, is the Gorgeous Edition. And then we have a Square Enix Club membership points redeeming system, which is not something that we seem to be doing in the US. So I don't know if that's going to work either. The time has come to turn on the new Switch. Ooh, I love that sound. So we will take a quick look at the setup here. Of course, we want to tell it that I speak English, that I am in the Americas. Yes, I agree and have read the terms, sure. We will skip the Wi-Fi setup for now as I don't need to do it at this moment, but it works just like it would setting up any other Wi-Fi connection. We'll pick our time zone as New York. And because I did not set up the Wi-Fi, I will have to manually enter the date and time. And of course I do do Nintendo online, but I'm not setting it up here right now. Ah, we must remove the Joy-Cons to get them to pair. Now, when removing them from the console, you will need to press the release button in the back. And it would like me to use the Joy-Cons a little bit to make sure they are working correctly. Now, just to get this going, I am going to create a temporary fake profile. As usual, I get a kick out of naming it Butt because I'm a child. And don't forget, I have my Switch friend code in the description below if you would also like to be my friend and perhaps we will get to play some games together in the near future. And there you have it. Your Nintendo Switch is ready to roll. Either download a game or drop in a cartridge and get to playing. Though I would normally turn this to dark mode. If you go into settings, you will find that. As far as if this has the new chip in it and the new battery life, if this is the, if this is the new model, I'm honestly having trouble figuring that out. Theoretically, you would think it is. I've seen some stuff online that says it is, but it's just people's comments, so it's not reputable. And according to the model number, it starts with an HAC, which is not the letters it should start with if it's new, but maybe because this is from a different country that's different. As far as the serial number, it starts with XKJ, which I believe is supposed to say XKC if it's new. So I don't know if this is actually the new chip or not. If you do know, please by all means let me know in the comments below. Thank you. And of course, we are going to now play some of this game. I did not get around to playing the demo, but we'll play some of this game for you. So enjoy some Let's Play. Okay, so I thought we would do this. We're actually gonna try both versions of the game, just sort of. So I went ahead and popped in the one from the actual console bundle from Japan. And first thing that's interesting is it is showing up in Japanese language up there. Obviously, you can play the English language version of this, I'm pretty sure, and I have the English language version, which is I'm sure what we'll be playing. But I just thought we would try that real quick. And um, I'm also gonna try popping in the code. I just kinda wanna see what happens. So let's, let's load it. And of course, there's a download. So be aware of that. Let's see how bad it is. I'm on okay internet right now. Even though the internet has been crazy out here. That's not gonna take too long. I also feel I should point out that I am playing on my original console. I'm not playing on the one I unboxed, but I did hook that up to a television and to a power outlet, and everything seems to be running as smooth as it should be. So that's good to know, considering it's a Japanese console and I'm in North America. 
And now it should be loading any moment. Here we go. Successfully updated. Play as the Eric B. Now I'm only going to show a little bit of this and we're going to switch to the other game, but I'm going to try the code after that. And then I got an idea I might do to make my life a little easier. <laughs> now it's already in English, so it is saying now loading. I would assume if this was full Japanese language, it would be in Japanese. Yep, Square Enix. And that's already gorgeous. I really don't want to see too much of this opening yet because I want to watch it for something else. So I'm going to kind of hit skip on it. And ah, so it is in Japanese. So that is also very loud. <laughs> Let me turn that down just a little bit. All right, so let's go out to the main menu and let's check the options on this one. So we got all the software information, software update, manage software, save data cloud. It's waiting to back up, of course, and we can go ahead and get my points. So that's interesting. I, I guess, yeah, I'll receive the points. I guess it, it, this is actually just the Japanese language only version that comes with it. So I'm probably very happy. Okay. Yeah, that's what I figured. I'm in the wrong region. Yeah. Now I could set up a Japanese eShop account and I could claim it there but I'm not gonna do that. Uh, maybe someday in the future, I just don't, I understand the purpose of why you would do that because you can get different sales, you can get different games early, you can get games you can't even get here, but I'm not that deep into the Switch side of things. <laughs> as deep as I am, I'll stay on the North America side for now, but I wanted to try that. And uh, the very interesting thing here is, I guess I do not have a place to change the language. If I am wrong, feel free to tell me in the comments. But now I'm going to pause real quick and do this off screen. Um, and I'm going to try using the DLC code on this version and see what happens. Okay, so as expected, that code just told me it was not available in my region. Now, this is interesting. Um, I put in the English language, it's in English language, and the thumbnail is completely different. So that's actually kind of cool. And there is a minor difference on the art of the box. There's like a kind of a golden banner, a tiny little bit on the front that's not on the other version and the back is slightly different. So maybe I'm showing you that right now, <laughs> maybe not, it's getting pretty late. And, uh, but now we're gonna load this and I'm imagining, well actually first, let's go ahead and um, get my points on this one, which I should be able to get. And these things do expire about a year after you activate them, just, but just spend them whenever you've got them, whenever you're buying something digital, save yourself a few pennies here or there. And I believe you get more for physical than you do for digital. And there's a period where they were expire too if you don't get them. So I grab them as soon as I jump in there. Um, so now we're gonna find out there's probably a software update, just like, yep, there wasn't the other. Let's see if it's just a slow, uh, just a short. That would be the next question. Or do we have a bigger update here? Interesting, no, it's about the same. I mean, I wish they would tell you the size of these things. Anybody out there know a reputable website where I can visit to find si update size files, or update file sizes? I'd be very curious about that. Because I've had some games that were, took like 16 minutes to update, and I'm like, w you could download the whole game in that time. <laughs> but uh, we'll get this thing started in a minute, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna just go ahead and do my play, my let's play for Sunday. And I'm just gonna cut parts of that together for this video. So you can get a little sampling of the game if you don't wanna watch my whole let's play. And you don't have to wait too much longer. And I'm less likely to get claimed if I show you full cutscenes. However, on Sunday, I'll actually just play for like the first hour or something, uh, full cutscenes, everything, whether they claim it or not. So you're gonna wanna come back for that if you really dig this game. That said, we're about to jump in here. And uh, so it's gonna be interesting because I'm gonna have to talk to different people. So uh, I can't really show you the beginning of this, so just bear with me a moment, all right? <laughs> but already you can tell, this is just absolutely beautiful. Oh, we got us a slime. And again, I never really played much of these originals. I played part of three, I think, part three maybe, because I think I got like a Famicom cart and one of those retro box subscriptions. Bum, bum, bum. Well, I wish you'd bring back everyone that Vegeta ever destroyed. That was not a real good Krillin either. <laughs> Echoes of an elusive age, definitive edition. Because really, I would just do just the unboxing, but people, every time I do one of these game unboxings, they tell me I should play the game. <laughs> oh, I like that you have all the versions of the letters. Um, what do I want to, who do I want to be? Uh, let's be, you know what? Why not? We're, I'm not gonna be butt. I'm actually gonna be kind of cuter than that. And hopefully I spell this right. Ka Ko I 
<laughs> I don't know if I got it right. That may be, it might have been an O there. Hackle rot. Look, I'm Kakarot. Wait, oh, I missed the end. Okay. Draconian quest. Interesting. Are you happy to proceed with the name Kakarot? Well, I guess. I can't do it, Goku. And I do love this. This is one of the coolest things about this game. You can play it in this beautiful modern 3D version. Or you can do old school 2D mode. And you can choose which one you want to begin your adventure in. But don't worry, you can change the way the world looks whenever you like by visiting a church. How cool is that? I mean, I wish you could just do it by button, but I get it. Are you sure you want to play in 3D mode? Yeah, that's what we're really here for. All right, so Y opens a map. Uh, let's see, hide objective, show objective, zoom in, zoom out. Okay, that looks pretty good. And uh, my objective is to head to Cobblestone Tor. I'm gonna turn that down a little bit. This is a bit much. All right, get out of the map. And I guess I, I guess I should talk to this lady because she's like, uh, mind how you go, you hear? Woo gonna do? It's our big day. Oh, it's our big day, Kakarot. We finally get to go and do the ceremony. We're gonna be grown ups at last. Brilliant. Hee hee. It looks like Sandy's as excited as we are. Come on, let's get moving. We don't want her to get to the top before us. All right, <gasps> Sandy. Sandy. <gasps> Slimes. I assume I'm about to actually fight. Monsters. Monsters. They're coming this way. I gotta remember to get super cockney when I do her voice. I think that'll be more fun. Oh, it's cold in here. Oh, a group of slimes draw near. Hey, we're into some battle right away. I love it. Oh, fight, tactics, settings, flee. Hell yeah, I'm gonna fight. They're little slimes. All right, attack. I don't have any spells. Oh, I gotta use the uh, D-pad. Do I have any? Uh, you know what? Let's just attack. Let's just do it. Slimey. How many? Oh, good. Oh, they're super. Ow. Ow. Get him, Sandy. Good dog. Uh, we're going to attack Slime C, because I think Sandy will take care of Slime B. Sandy, you do that barking. Oh, you paralyzed it with fear? That's awesome. We got it. I'll kill him for you, Gemma. I will kill for you, Gemma. Tough little blighters, aren't they? No. Did you not just, were you not watching? Ooh, I get gold. Ooh. Treasure chest. Kekara puts the medicinal herb in his item bag for safekeeping. Oh, I love these designs. The locations are amazing looking. And of course the characters look phenomenal. Oh, like I can just, whoa. And if you down click the right stick, it recenters your camera. Nice. I see a slime. I sense a fight. Fight me, bro. Come at me, bro. M -m -m monsters I don't think they're spotted you. You should sneak up and try to surprise them. Okay, here we go. Preemptive attacks. Get close enough to a monster and a small orange arrow will appear above them. Press A and you will give them a weighty wallop with your weapon. <laughs> nice alliteration. Lowering their HP before battle has even begun. Why not try springing a preemptive attack on the slime over there? Don't mind if I do, but he's looking right at me. Oh, there we go. Only got one hit. I only got one hit point on him though. All right, that's fine. Let's fight. How am I doing? Uh, we'll attack. We'll attack Slime A. Slime A's down. Slime B's gonna get a hit in on me. Nope, Sandy's got him. Thank you, Sandy. Good dog. Tough little blighters, aren't they? Who's a good dog? Four experience points. Four gold. I gotta keep that in mind. Ooh, look, there's something different. I don't know if we're gonna fight it or not. Maybe I shouldn't have used that spell just yet. Hi, guys. Oh, boy. Now it's on. What do we got? Ooh, two of them. What are those? A group of needlers. Needlers, huh? All right. We'll see how tough they are. That's going to hurt. Oh, jeez. He just gave him a 31 hit point heal. Oh, my God. He actually attacked my dog, too. Um, Let's see. What items do I have? Sword... I have a cobblestone greatsword. What? Oh, why am I not using that? Oh, it can't be used in battle? 
That's why I'm not using that, okay. Well, you know what? I'm gonna use the frizz again on this guy. See what kind of hit power it actually has. That's not bad. Did I take him down? Okay. I don't know how you get mana. Oh good, we got him paralyzed. How we get mana back up? Oh, my mana, oh nice. Uh, let's just go ahead and spell him out then. Jackarot cast mana. Oh man, jump force is on. I gotta, yeah. Oh, these might be tricky. I may need to make sure I heal and stuff. These things look like they can be tough. Uh oh. Okay, but I, I need, I hope the battle music changes up over time. We gotta help the kid, right? So, I'll try an attack slash and see what happens. I got a feeling it doesn't do too much. I mean, that was all right. Ooh, they definitely hit me more. Oh, next turn, I need to heal. Oh no, Sandy missed. Oh, cool. Gemma actually did something. Oh. Let's, uh, let's try a spell. Let's frizz one of them and see what happens. Probably should have frizzed the other one. Oh, man. What did she do? Oh, she gave me more mana. Sweet. Ugh. I think, okay, I'm gonna get another frizz in on A. I just need to take A down. Did we get him? We got one, sweet. We can do this. Oh, she healed me, we got this, we got this. Stop attacking my dog, you turd burglar. I didn't kill him yet. Er, Sandy's good, Sandy paralyzed him. Good job, Sandy, good dog. Just give him my mana back. Well, then we might as well just use it one more time. Fireball. Woo! That did it. Dang, Skippy. Kakarot. Ooh, 40 XP. 22 gold. Level 3. Look at me. I'm level 3. Boop, 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 doo, doo. Okay, hopefully that game looked really, really cool. Hopefully it is very fun. I am going to be playing some more for a Switch Game Sunday video, so look back on my channel here Sunday, and we'll have a nice little bit more gameplay for you to see. And then I will continue that on my Patreon page, which there is a link for in the description below if you want to check that out and see a whole bunch more gameplay, predominantly on the Nintendo Switch, plus some games I don't even play on my main channel. And there you have it. That is the Dragon Quest. 11S Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition Japanese Import Nintendo Switch Console Bundle. Say that 10 times fast. Okay, that, 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 done. Anyways, now is the time on Sprockets when you start to comment below and let me know what you think about this. Do you like this game? Are you a big Dragon Quest fan? How do you feel this particular console stacks up against the others? What do you think of the artwork on the console, on the dock, and especially these beautiful Joy-Cons? Let me hear your thoughts. Definitely geek out below. I can't wait to see what you have to say. Also, thank the goodness of the world for a place like Play Asia actually existing so someone like me can get their hands on something that will be rather rare in their home country. Other than that, you can click that thumbs up button and give me that good old thumb of encouragement as I do love to be encouraged. But now I'm going to get out of here so I can go play some new stuff on my new console and I'll see you all later.